What's up, YTPC? This is DSG Pipe Smoker with another pipe smoking video. And today, I'm going to smoke my restored Royal Guard 547, which is a Stanwell Bent Acorn second. So, in this first video, I'm going to talk about how I restored it, and then I'm going to load up a bowl at the end and smoke it. The second video, um, I'll go over basically what I thought of it after its first bowl of, you know, real tobacco. Um, but this is by far the best um this is by far the best restoration project i've ever done um for one thing this pipe was ghosted with marijuana and for more details on that i will link down below the first video of this pipe and um and the detail which also outlines the details of how I came to conclude that and some of the hassle that I went through but um, it wasn't easy but it was definitely doable and it turned out absolutely phenomenal now it's not a hundred percent done I don't know if you can see it or not but the stamping um, still needs to have some paint inside of it. I wasn't able to procure some white uh, nail polish, which based off of my research is the best thing to use and really the thing to use um, for stuff like that. So I'm going to try to do that tomorrow, but let's start with the bowl. So normally when I do a, an estate clean, I have to remove the cake. Um, Usually I do this with a pipe nail because it's sharp enough around the edges to remove the cake, but not so sharp as to really do any damage to the briar should I go that deep. And usually, like for example, this, um, what was this again? This Weber. This Weber... I left the original cake in because the cake was thick enough and strong enough, hard enough that, you know, it could act as an insulation and I didn't have to break in the pipe. Um, well, when I tried doing that with this pipe, and again, the details are down below, um, basically it completely dissolved and it turned the, um, the salt completely black. Um, the Q-tips and the pipe cleaners were also behaving real funny. So, um, but like I said, all the details are down below in the link that I provided. Um, it took me six salt and alcohol treatments to finally de-ghost and completely clean out all of the residue from the marijuana. Um in order to make it safe enough to smoke. The other thing that I did, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I used a product called Fireplace Morta. You get it at Lowe's or Home Depot, um, you know, in that, in the fireplace section. Basically what it's used for is it's used to repair fireplaces like weak spots or cracks and things like that You're supposed to put it in those areas and it's guaranteed up to 2,000 degrees so Technically this bowl coating is actually uh, more fire retardant than briar itself um, I do have one pipe no two pipes I take that back two pipes that are Besides this one that are, um, that have a fireplace morta, you know, bowl coating. 
And by and large, what I've noticed about them is, while they do re, um, prevent the bowl from overheating, um, for the most part, hold on one second, turn my porch light back on, for the most part, um, they don't absorb moisture as well as briar, and they don't um, cake very well, but anyway, I managed to clean that up, I managed to clean up the rim, the finish on it was a lot dull, was a lot more dull, I used chapstick to brighten it up, and I used it on the stem as well, it took, I was using BJ Long um, pipe cleaners, and they come in a bundle of 56 per bundle, and I ended up using like four or five bundles on just this pipe. So, at least 200 pipe cleaners went into this pipe, and I don't know how many Q-tips, but the shank really did need a cleaning, and so did the stem. Now, on to the stem. This is where it gets interesting, because I did mention that I have a method that requires no power tools um, and no, um, what's it called, the, no buffing wheel, no buffing wheel, no buffing um, components or carnauba wax. Basically what I did, and for estate pipes I'll usually do an OxyClean treatment, but I don't do that for all of my stems. I just, like the salt and alcohol treatment, I usually just do that once with the um, estate pipes, but after I did that on this pipe, basically I did the same treatment that I use on all my pipes that not only acts as a decleaner, but a routine weekly or uh, bi-weekly deoxidation method. Basically what I did was I used toothpaste. Yes, toothpaste. Um, and what I did was I removed the stem I got it hot under water and dried it off real thoroughly to open up the pores of the vulcanite and I massaged um, I massaged the uh, toothpaste on the stem. Now when I do a routine cleaning, really all I have to do is use a paper towel and you know really rub at it and it'll remove oxidation. It will actually turn the paper towel brown and the stem black. On this one, I had to use um, dry erase, um, Mr. Clean dry erase mar or, uh, pads, but that didn't take very long either. The soak was about half hour, 45 minutes, and when it came out of the soak, it was completely black. It took about two treatments of using toothpaste. Which, by the way, using toothpaste and using chapstick are probably the two least expensive things to do for cleaning vulcanite stems. So, if you want a low-cost, budget-friendly method of cleaning vulcanite stems, that's the best one I've found anyways. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, lots of pipe cleaners too. Um, to really get out the nasty shit that was in the stem that absorbed into the vulcanite. But once I did that, I just took a thing of chapstick that had, um, all, or not olive oil. It had shea butter, it had beeswax, and coconut oil as the primary ingredients, which, from what I've been able to research, if you're going to use something other than a dedicated uh, bowl and vulcanite stem polisher, those are good things to use. And that's why a lot of people use chapstick, because chapstick usually includes those ingredients. And I basically just rubbed it really good, let it sit for about 10 minutes, and then I massaged it in with my fingers, letting it melt along the crevices so it'll get in the crevices. And then I buffed it and polished it with a paper towel, and that looks 
a hell of a lot better. Like I said, I'm very ecstatic about um, the results of this. This is by far the best restoration I've ever done. And it's smokable. I don't have to uh, necessarily um, use the fingernail polish on the logo, but I will eventually. So, with that said, I'm going to do the first light, and that should transition into part two. If you guys have any questions or concerns, please ask them down below, or do a VR. I would be happy to hear them. Oh, by the way, I'm using half and half. Um, to make a long story short, I misplaced one of my Orlick Dark Strong Kentucky um, mason jars, so thinking that I had lost it indefinitely, I pulled out one of my tins, um, put that in the mason jar that the half and half used to be in, and then put it in this, uh, what is this called, Classico, um, Spaghetti sauce container. So, I should probably do this over the mason jar. It's probably too much tobacco on the top. Okay. So, here we go. First time this pipe has probably ever seen actual tobacco. Wow. So far, so good. Um, I may have to do a re-review of um, Half and Half. It's bringing out the nutty flavors a lot better, and the natural burly taste a lot better than any of my other pipes. Well, I'm going to leave you guys be. I've rambled on enough. Um, stay tuned for part two. I'm going to finish this bowl, then I'll start part two. This has been DSG Pipe Soaker with another Pipe Soaking video. You guys have a good day.